Hi there, I'm Icehair. This is going to be a pacifist review of the quest mod for Skyrim Special Edition called Maelstrom by a, a modder Nachtdämmerung or something like that. Uh, it's, it was uploaded to the Nexus I think in September 2019 and uh, it's got, compared to other mods and compared to how long uh, it's been on the, the Nexus 4, it's, it's quite famous already. It's got um, I mean, it doesn't have as many endorsements as stuff like the Forgotten City, but the, that mod has been there for years and years. So, um, it, it seems to be a popular one. Um, and personally, I, I agree, it's, uh, I, I like it. And one of the reasons I personally like, love it is that Tyrell Nachtemron's mod is that he often takes direct inspiration from Norse mythology. And you know, I made a video before about how I was really hoping for some more Norse mythology to inspire Skyrim back when it was first launched. And uh, you know, as always, there are mods to fix whatever's wrong with Skyrim. So this particular mod is based on the Norse goddess um, or demoness Ran, the wife of the sea god Egir. And Ran was very much dreaded by Norse sailors in, in Norse beliefs. Uh, those who drowned at sea spent the afterlife with her arm at the bottom of the sea, basically. And uh, she's got uh, a number of daughters, nine, um, nine being an important number in, in Norse mythology, and they all have names that refer to waves. They have names like Bulya, which is, which means simply wave. It's obviously the ancestor of, of modern Scandinavian words for wave, like Bulge or Bulje in, in Norwegian. And these uh, daughters of Ran have uh, apparently the ability to pull sailors down to the depths of Ran, so she really <laughs> represents uh, the danger of the sea. So while the characters in this mod are definitely Norse, uh, the story is very much the modder's own creation. Uh, what you do is you follow a party of adventurers and what are called cultists or like um, um, obsessive people um, they're all drawn by an eerie and brilliantly acted voice that the player can also keep hearing at times as you progress. Uh, and this voice calls you to explore even deeper and deeper down through a long um, dungeon, which is sometimes watery, flooded a few times, but really not that often, uh, considering we're, we're dealing with uh, guys at the bottom of the sea. Uh, there are lots of shall we call them, non-linear puzzles. Um, like, you have to go back and forth quite a lot, and that sometimes got a little bit uh, samey or annoying. Uh, that's one quibble that I have with the mod. But on the other hand, the mod did a great job of creating a very, very compelling mood throughout the entire experience. I, uh, and as far as, pu far as puzzles go, you know, I suck at puzzles, and I still really got completely stuck at one point in the mod and had to go check out another video to, to see how to get through that. Uh, and really the only reason I was got stuck was that I wasn't really backtracking enough. It was quite early on, so I hadn't really learned to go backtracking that much. In addition to being a quest mod, it is certainly also a companion mod. You've got uh, one sort of vanilla voice companion, and that, that companion follows you throughout the, the dungeon. And then at the very end, you have the possibility of another companion. I'm not going to spoil anything, although if you read introduction to the mod, you'll see pretty quickly who that is. Um, as a pacifist a review, I have to say this is not really a very pacifist-friendly mod either. Uh, admittedly, you can bypass many of the enemies. And I also don't really object to the endless number of drowned, dead, and other varieties of undead foes here. Even though sometimes it's really not that practical to to sneak past all of them. Uh, they, and sometimes they do have to, to go down. They, they have a way of thanking the player for their release, you know, because, you know, they're sort of trapped in an unpleasant, dead or undead state uh, and better off being put back to sleep, I guess. In addition to these dead people, you also have to fight um, the nine daughters of Ram themselves. That's definitely fights to the death. You could argue they're monsters in a way, but they're also sort of person-like. And at one point fairly early on you really do have to kill a living person to obtain a key, or at least you know I couldn't find his in his inventory in any way when I tried to pickpocket him. Uh, and also, I hope I don't spoil too much, but stating at the very end of the mod you have to make a choice that will end up with at least one person, well if you can really call both of them that, uh, will end up with one being one entity uh, dead, at least. Uh, or the you know, alternative to that is to, is to abandon the whole save game, because you won't be able to get back 
um, out of the area you're in unless one of those two die. So, yeah. Um, summary, I doesn't have the greatest pacifist potential, maybe 4 out of 10 in that, in that regard, but Final Verdict is very, it's a very eerie, very compelling adventure, and it's got a it's got the possibility of a, a admittedly scary but very interesting companion at the end. So I did like it. I'd give it an, 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 an 8 out of 10. And, you know, I might bump that up to the 9 out of 10 just for being, you know, Norse mythology inspired. All right, that's it. Peace out. No idea when the next video is going to be. But until then, live and live.